you can use uh, matrices in order to solve systems of equations. You're going to need a inverse matrix. And from there, as long as you know what your inverse matrix is, you can actually solve your system of equations. Now, remember back in Algebra 1 that you could solve systems of equations by graphing, by using substitution, and by using elimination. Personally, I think this method is the easiest because you can plug all of it into a calculator. So, for starters, let's say that I want to solve 4x minus 12y equals 7, and then I've got 1x plus 6y equals 9. Okay, so remember that solving in a system of equations means that I'm going to find an x value and a y value that satisfy both equations. Okay, and so that's what a system of equations is in case you forgot, which is no big deal. So if you notice here, I kind of already can see where this matrix is going. I've got 4, negative 12, 1, 6, and some of you might think, okay, then now i got to add the 7 and 9 in. Not quite that way. Um, so the first matrix is the 4, negative 12, 1, 6. And we're looking at the variables x and y, and they must equal 7 and 9. So from here, I need to actually go ahead and solve that. So how do I do that? This right here is considered matrix A. This is considered matrix B. What you would do is you would take the inverse of your matrices to both sides, so that it would cancel the A. So we would do A negative 1 times A equals A negative 1 times B. Technically, sorry, for all technical purposes, there is an X here. And that, so what we're doing here with this, A negative 1 and A actually cancel to leave us with X equals the inverse of A times B. So remember that um, when we're multiplying matrices, our matrix dimensions matter. So that's why the inverse has to go first in this setup. And the reason why we can cancel out the A negative 1 times A is because we know using an inverse matrix, this is going to give us our identity. Okay. So with that being said, I need to actually find the inverse of A. So we're going to have our XY here equals, well, we know that it's going to be 1 over our determinant of A, which I'm just going to do off to the side here. Our determinant is going to be 4 times 6 to give us 24, and negative 12 times 1 to give us negative 12. We're actually going to subtract those, and I get 36. We're going to switch around our diagonals here. So we've got 6 and 4. This goes to a positive 12, and this goes to a negative 1 and then times it by 7 over 9. All right, so from here, since you guys have already been exposed to multiplying matrices and actually finding your true inverse, you didn't necessarily need to do this. You could have actually just done this step right here. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and plug this in in order to solve my XY matrix. So after plugging this in, I have XY 
equals 25 over 6 and 29 over 36. So what that means is my x value that satisfies my beginning system is 25 over 6. The y value that satisfies both equations is going to be that 29 over 36. Now, you can do this with larger systems of equations. Some of you might not know this, but you can actually you can actually do this with a three variable system. Some of you may not have known this even existed. Same type of setup. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just give you the matrix setup and then kind of go through it from there. Uh, so I've got 3, 1, 1, negative 6, 5, 3, 9, negative 2, negative 1. We're going to go x, y, z. And that's going to equal negative 1, negative 9, and 5. So when I'm looking at this, I might not actually see the system, but just to kind of give you a, what it actually looks like, this would the first row would really be 3x plus 1y plus 1z equals negative 1. Okay, so that's what our system kind of looks like. I'm just jumping through it a little bit so it goes a little bit faster. So we've got a right now times x equals b. So again, I'm just using my inverse. x is going to equal a negative 1 times b. So I just set this up as my inverse matrix times my b. For my inverse matrix, I get negative 1 ninth. I already took it times that 1 over my determinant. 1 ninth, 2 ninths, negative 7 thirds, 11 thirds, 4 over 3, negative 5 over 3, 5 over 3, and negative 7 over 3. And I'm still timesing it by that negative 1, negative 9, and 5. So, actually, once I do that, I get a final answer here for my x, y, z. I get 2 ninths, negative 4 thirds, and negative 1 third. So that tells me then that x equals 2 ninths in the system, y equals negative 4 thirds, and z equals negative 1 third.